Howdy! In this lesson, I'm going to introduce the concepts of finite wings and specifically how the wingtips and wingtip vortices affect the rest of the flow. So in general, we're interested in some wing that creates some lift. And what this means is that we're going to have some pressure differential. So this means that we have low pressure on top and we have a high and because of this pressure differential, nature is going to try and balance it. And it does that around the wingtips by causing some flow around these wingtips. So what does this look like in three dimensions? This is a picture looking into the flow. Uh, but in three dimensions, we have some finite wing, uh, in this case with a rectangular plan form. And our velocity is going to be in the positive x direction. And it's going to cause some lift in the z direction. So our z direction is straight up. Our x direction follows our velocity. And our y direction is what we call the spanwise direction. And this causes uh, some vortices that come off the wingtips, called some wingtip vortices. These are counter-rotating, and both of them uh, cause air on the top to go towards the center and on the bottom to come away from the center. All right, so let's define this a little more thoroughly. So this, uh, the length of this rectangular wing is going to be B, and it, that's our span. And then the uh, distance, the cordwise distance is C as before. Now, before what we've done with an infinite wing is we've essentially just said that we have some vortex filament that travels from negative infinity to positive infinity in the y direction. So this goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now this doesn't really make physical sense. In real life, this should just go from one side of the wing to the other. But it can't just end due to Helmholtz's theorem. And what Helmholtz's theorem says is that a vortex filament cannot end unless it's on a surface or uh, it's in a loop. So this vortex filament either needs to go to infinity, needs to end on a surface, or needs to create a loop. So what we will do is we will send these this vortex filament off into infinity in the x direction. So these guys are going to go towards infinity. All right, so what does this actually look like? Well, a vortex filament has some rotation gamma. And you can think of this as a directional vortex filament. Uh, and the gamma vector is along the, the, the length of the vortex filament. Um, and it follows the right-hand rule. So if we draw the same gamma down here, then it needs to be going in the same direction, and it will create um, some vorticity in the direction defined by the right-hand rule, once again. And the same thing on this side. And this matches exactly what we expect to see. We expect to see that we will have some gamma caused by these trailing edge vortices, which causes some rotation around our wingtips. So how does this actually affect the flow on our wing? Well, right next to the vortex, of course, we're going to have a very high amount of downwash. And then in the center, it's going to be somewhat smaller. So our total downwash is going to have some profile and it will cause um, some changes in what lift the wing actually sees. So how do we calculate that? Well, first off, let's go ahead and draw our uh, kind of standard situation for a given uh, spanwise location, which is some y. So at some given y, we'll have a airfoil that has some angle of attack with the incoming flow. 
And obviously this angle of attack is exaggerated, but we need a lot of room. And let's draw the incoming flow. And the incoming flow is assumed to be aligned with the x-axis. So this is our alpha. But more than that, we'll give it a name. We're going to call this the geometric angle of attack. And essentially all that's saying is that this is the angle of attack that, uh, in space, this is forming. Now the effect of the downwash, this downwash W, is to create an effective angle of attack that is less than the actual angle of attack. So let's draw the effective angle of attack. So this angle here between these two lines is what we're calling the effective angle of attack. Now where does that come from? Well, we still have our uniform flow, which is aligned with the x-axis. But now we also have some downwash, which is a function of y. And this downwash changes the local velocity that the airfoil sees. So this line here is simply the local velocity. So we'll call this V local. And this angle is alpha sub i. And once again, we'll give it a name. This is the induced angle of attack. So in very simple terms, the effective angle of attack is going to be equal to our geometric angle of attack minus our induced angle of attack. So straight away, we can see that the downwash is reducing the amount of lift over a given airfoil section. Since the, angle, the effective angle of attack is uh, being reduced, the lift generated by this section will naturally be reduced. So that's one effect, but it has another effect as well. So in general terms, the lift produced in vector form is going to be perpendicular to both the incoming velocity, this v infinity, and the circulation. So the lift, if we're aligned with the x and y axes for our v infinity and uh, gamma, the lift is going to be exactly in the z direction. And that's what we see uh, for an infinite wing. But with this, we're changing the local, um, the local velocity, the local incoming velocity. And so our new lift vector, our new force vector, so let's say that this is for infinite wings. And then for finite wings, we have a force that is equal to rho times v local crossed with, once again, our gamma. So this is for finite wings. This is just recognizing the fact that our local velocity is different than our uniform velocity. So let's draw a line that is perpendicular to our local velocity. So this right here is going to be the direction of our lift. Now we still want to define lift as perpendicular to our incoming velocity. So this is our actual lift per unit span. This is the force seen per unit span. And what occurs here is that we actually get drag. And we're calling this the induced drag per unit span. So the general effect of the downwash caused by these wingtip vortices is to change the effective angle of attack from the geometric uh, to the effective. And then additionally, we're changing the actual angle of the lift. And this generates some induced drag. So in the next couple of lessons, we'll actually be calculating